surrender my will. I surrender my emotions. I surrender my words. I surrender my actions. Because I want you to be glorified. And I really want Satan to be horrified. God shielded us from what should have killed us. God protected us once more and again. Just tell somebody around you and said, God did it again. He did it again. He did it again. He did it again. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You may have your seats if you will, but while you're taking your seats, just tell somebody around you and say, the Lord is on my side. He protected. He protected us again. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your praise right there. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to his name. Oh, glory to his name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise God that God has us in this place. And I'm certainly grateful for what he's done and what he's doing. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hasten on through, and uh, we're grateful. Praise God for the chorale for singing that selection. Our Father, you are holy. We give you glory and we bless your name. God's name is the best name I know. God's name is the greatest name I know. God's name is the greatest name that I know. His name is the best name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sometimes God allows us to go through things and we don't understand why all the time, but certainly you can say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, as it was Lazarus, he said, I had to do this so you know I'm God. 
And there's some places in our lives we certainly could question God and say, God, why? God, why? And certainly uh, we've heard that through different examples in the last few moments. God, why? 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 But I'm here to let you know God is showing us that he's God. You've given God another opportunity to say he's God. Hallelujah. Your life, the life that you live is showing God, showing the world that he is God. You're giving God another opportunity to show off. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're giving God another opportunity. When you say, Lord, I want to be a miracle. Lord, perform a miracle in my life. You just open yourself up to be the next candidate for God's miracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to the word because I must share this. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. I still have a yes. I still have a yes. Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody and say, I still say yes. Yes, go. As we um, look at the life of Jesus and we see how he endured so much and how much he going through even the last moments of his life. And certainly we can look at his life and have a renewed appreciation for him going to the cross for us. And I know that now we're talking pastor Easter is past, resurrection is past, but I'm still talking about him getting up. Because without his getting up, our faith is futile. Our praise is empty. And certainly we thank God that he got up out the grave. Uh, as he got up out the grave, we are presented different scenarios different stories, different accounts that he rose and he spoke with the disciples, he spoke with the Marys and he spoke with uh, the other disciples, Emmaus' disciples. He had conversations with them. But I want to go back to one of the sayings before he died. One of those sayings, um, in fact, when we group all them together, normally on Good Friday, there are those that will celebrate uh, and observe Jesus' death uh, because, or th uh, they'll celebrate his death with um, bringing attention to what they call the seven last sayings. I want to propose to you that God hasn't stopped speaking. He's yet speaking. So I've learned to evolve that he is not the seven last sayings because the seven last sayings would mean he stopped talking since his death. But one thing we know, Jesus is yet talking. And he's yet speaking. And so with his speaking... I've learned to say the seven last things before his death. Seven last things he had to say. But one of them is pressed on my spirit to share with you today. And let's go to John, the 19th chapter, and the 30th verse. And uh, glory to God. We are also going to go to Philippians 
1 and 6 and Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 1 and 6, and then we'll go on to Philippians 3 and 14. And so... John 19 and 28, let's start there. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, I thirst. Now a vessel of sour wine was sitting there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and put it on uh, to put it to his mouth. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he, sour wine, he said, it is finished bowing his head, and he gave up his spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Philippians 1 and 3. Let's start at the first verse and jump in. I'm expanding this a little bit. Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Jesus Christ, all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 3 and 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. One thing I do Forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to those things which are ahead of me, I press toward the mark, to the goal for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Oh, therefore let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And then if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Let's jump over to one more place, Hebrews. Um, thank you, Jesus. 12 and 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares or besets us, and let's us, let us run with endurance that the race is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Look at your neighbor and said, completion. Uh, as we look at this saying, oftentimes when we look at the word finished, uh, we think about completion and uh, we see that finish uh, means you come to a place of fulfillment. You have finally done your job. You have did what you needed to do. But we need to understand that Jesus said it is finished as far as his work up until the cross, as far as his body was. Not that. Uh, that alone was all he had to do, but now it goes further. He said, I had to leave you, 
And when I leave you, I'm going to send you a comforter in my name. And when I send the comforter in my name, I'm going to send another one in my name, send another one, uh, meaning he's going to send the same uh, essence of what he had. He's going to send that to us. That way we could be empowered to do the things that God want us to do. And as we look here in the scriptures that as we're moving forward, we have to come up in our minds, in our hearts, uh, to the place to say, I must make a difference between holy and unholy. For the Bible tells us to come out and be separate and not separated. He says for us to be separate and come out from among them and be separate, meaning put a difference between holy and unholy. And so therefore, there are times as we run this race, uh, we, we Paul, uh, Paul put it like this to the church of Philippi, Philippi and tells us that it's as if we're running a race. In other words, there is a finish line to get to. And so, therefore, when we're running, we're running, uh, but certainly there are times, if you, depending what race you're running, and if you're in shape, you not, might not feel like getting to the end finish line. You sometimes feel like taking a break. You sometimes say, I don't want to run no more. But I come to preach and talk to somebody that want to keep on going. And maybe in your mind, uh, you've been telling yourself, I'm tired. But your spirit man has been saying, I want to keep on going. I want to keep on pushing. Because every now and then, in order to get where you got to go, it comes with sacrifice. So it's going to take a little push. It's going to take a little arm. It's going to take a little bit more than what you've been giving. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going fastly through here. So I pray you can come on the board and, and get on the train. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you to keep on going. But don't you understand that your completion, your fulfillment, God being fulfilled in your life, your purpose being fulfilled in your life will give somebody else strength to keep on going. And if you don't feel like going for nobody else, you ought to get up in your mind and say, I need to run for myself and for my God. Even when you don't feel like running for yourself, you said, I got to get up from here and finish what God told me to finish uh, do what God told me to do uh, later for the excuses uh, but it's time to give God what's due to him uh, it's time to give God uh, what belongs to him uh, lay aside every sin and wait I wish I could preach this, but I don't have as much time as I would like. But look at your name and say, you got to keep on pushing. You got to keep on moving. You got to keep on pressing. Press on. Hey, God. Press on in the Lord. Keep going. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we get weighted down with the cares of this world. Not feeling like we get into we, 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 we don't deserve uh, what we've been facing. Uh, we don't deserve uh, what's been happening. Uh, I don't know who I'm preaching to, uh, but I'm preaching to somebody. Uh, but I want to encourage you uh, to follow the will of God. Uh, no matter what, uh, you got to submit yourself uh, to the process because uh, it won't be long now uh, that the Lord is going to move uh, on your behalf. Be not weary in well doing for you shall reap if you faint not nudge your neighbor and say neighbor don't faint now. Don't get weary now for the Lord has anointed you to complete the work. He's going to complete it. He's going to perform it look at your neighbor and say neighbor I don't know what you've been facing I don't know what you've been dealing with but I'm encourage you to press on press on press on allow God to do the work it don't feel good 
it don't seem good. Keep on pressing. Keep on. Keep it on. Until the Lord reveal his plan. Keep on serving. Keep on praying. Because the enemy knows you're just around the corner from your breakthrough. You're just around the corner from your ministry. You're just around the corner. But you got to get in your mind. I'm going to do it. I am determined to hold out to the end. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow. But I I got a savior and, and he's sweet tap your neighbor and say neighbor he's sweet he's sweeter than the day before I'm not talking about the sweetness from the sugar I'm not talking about sweetness on homosexuality I'm talking about he gets better this walk with God it gets better it gets better 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 tap your neighbor and say neighbor it gets better you may be sick but it gets better you may not be where you want to be but it gets better 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 for the Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning be let saints I gotta tell you it's getting better cause the clothes it's coming to the chapter of your life it's coming to a close that thing that's been a nuisance it's coming to an end I prophesy an end I prophesy I speak over your life to let you know it's getting better you won't be bound by those vices you won't be sick and tired you're getting jubilant you're getting strength you're getting healed yes 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 tap your neighbor and say keep on pushing tap your neighbor not a real good I give you permission to nudge him and say get ready to cross the finish line get ready to go in your next chapter and say I cross I fulfilled I've done my work it's coming it's getting ready to happen tell your neighbor and say neighbor get ready Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, no longer will procrastination be the lock on your life. Neither will it be the thing that keeps you bound. But you're moving into a season of fruitfulness, a season of production. But it's going to take you breaking up the fallow ground, showing his seed and tending to it. The Lord... I heard the old song said, the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you. Look at your neighbor and said, the Lord will never leave you nor forsake.
never see uh, uh, never seen the righteous uh, forsaken uh, nor his seed uh, begging bread uh, the next chapter uh, in your life uh, you're not a beggar uh, you're going uh, into a better season uh, you're going uh, you shall be uh, the lender uh, and not the borrower uh, you're going to develop uh, a discipline uh, to stick with it uh, to stick with the plan uh, you're not going uh, to spin spin uh, but you're going to spin save uh, and a save spin uh, guess what our God is a merciful God if you're weary don't don't stop now it's a trick of the enemy to keep you bound to keep you stuck I want you to keep on going tap your neighbor and say keep on moving there is greater that's ahead of you than what's been behind you don't get your eyes fixed on what's been behind you you can't change the past but you can help the future yes you might not be able to get what you want to get but you'll get it soon if you keep discipline active in your life tell your name as a neighbor subscribe to the plan uh, that God has uh, and it won't be long uh, till you see God uh, moving uh, in your life uh, God uh, it's telling you right now uh, you are knowing it uh, to face it uh, you are knowing it uh, don't retreat uh, but advance uh, don't retreat uh, but advance uh, advance move forward I wish somebody was desperate enough to say I'm sick and tired of where I am but the Lord is going to give me strength he's taking you from embarrassment to triumph no longer will your past define you but it will refine you don't give people that much power over your life but no God is giving you power to handle it shout it But the Bible says we must keep going. Where does it say that at? It says it in Luke, the ninth chapter, the 62nd verse. But Jesus said to them, or said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. I want to let you know don't look back don't look back don't look back I'm thinking oh Lot's wife she began to look back it started to look good she was attracted to what was yes and not where she was going but I might encourage somebody focus on your future focus on your future make decisions now make the right choices now and they will change your direction you didn't get here overnight you didn't get in the problem overnight but the Lord will work it out it might take time 
time. It's going to take some patience. But be determined. I'm going to see this through. Because God has never left me. Even when I left him. When I didn't want to be bothered. With church folk. The Lord said. You're not doing it. For church folk. You're not doing it. For people. And you're doing it. To the glory. Of your God. Tap your name up. And say don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on striving. Don't slack. Keep on driving. Slack not. Don't drive. Keep going forward. You're on your way. You're on your way. Keep pushing. Keep pedaling. Keep crawling. Keep walking. Whatever you do. Ha, don't stop. Ha, don't stop. Ha, don't stop. And the reason some of us we try to stop. But we can't stop because what God has in us, what God has in us, what God has in you is greater. It's greater. You be let, me, let me encourage somebody real quick. Don't stop feeding your baby. Don't stop feeding your baby. That thing that leads, that thing that gives you great joy and passion, keep feeding that. You can't say nothing. Uh, let me tell you this. Let me, let, let, let me go this way. Let me go this way. You can't, nobody can stop you from doing and being what you need to be except you. Satan even can't, he don't even have the power. What he does, he sows seeds in your mind to get you off course. And if he, you're not careful, he will use those that are in the house of God to throw you off course. The state of the church I'm not talking about this local church. Just in general. And I'll, I'll preach again next time. But I want to share with you that we, the church, the general body, we really have to come to grips that Everybody is not going to grow with you. Everybody's not going to grow with you. And everybody won't want to see you grow. Everybody, as much as I would, you know, being in uh, ministry, uh, you got to love people. You got to love people. You got to love people when it's not convenient. You got to love people when it's not working to your benefit. You know, it's easy to love people when they don't what you want them to do. But when they don't do what you want to do, you still got to love them. Um, it, 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 it's a sad place when we get into a place where we allow people that much power over our lives that they can speak a word, an ill, ill, uh, uh, ill-spoken word. 
is intended to do harm. And we allow those false prophets to speak in our lives and then wonder why our lives are turned upside down. It's because you allow people that didn't have an ear to hear God to speak in your life. And, 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 and the last, I was saying the last 24 hours, my eyes have said, wow, this is where we are. When, when, we, when we as children of God uh, and Holy Ghost field can, can, can get to a place where we have been in church most of all of our lives and then come to a place and say, you know, I don't even know if I really believe what I've been preaching. There are people that will preach to you and preach you under the pew. Pass, make you pass out and they have a disregard. They don't even believe what they're preaching. I come to you with a heavy heart today because there are people that's willing to walk away from it all just to appease their flesh. I'm not, I, 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 don't, I don't plan to do this. I, 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 and I really hope nobody else plan to do this. But why waste 50 years sitting up in a church only to go to hell for the last five? There's a greater work that we have to do. And Jesus said, when I leave you, you're going to do greater works. You're going to do greater works. But if you don't believe the great one or the greatest one who said it, your preaching, your singing, your dancing is all in vain. I don't want to preach to you and go to hell. Come on, come on here. Come on, come on. If, if we're going to do a reflection, I can't be mad with you, shout with you, and have, and have an alt with you, and then I'm going to try to serve you. So you can't serve me nothing. Y'all hear me? Let, let us come together and let's reason. Let's get this together. Hallelujah. Let's get this together. And, and oftentimes, I, I, I know in the old church, and, 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 and not necessarily in this one, but in the old church, uh, and sometimes it was practice here. Hallelujah. It, 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 it was this, that you didn't even take communion if you had a problem with somebody in the church. But some of us got an evil disposition talking about we Holy Ghost feel. But we won't even get things right when in the house of God. I don't know if it's an oxymoron or you're just a moron. What does that have to do with it is finished? Let me tell you, there's a lot of things that are held up because you haven't committed to God yet. You haven't got it right with God yet. That's why some things will not be released in your life until you forgive them. How you mad with somebody and don't even know why you mad with them? Don't even have a logical or not even a, a logical reason as to why you're upset. I'm just upset. What they do to you? I don't know. I just don't like them. Well, why you don't like? Now, now, let me tell you this. You don't have to like nobody, but you got to love everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Glory to God. Uh, I got to love everybody to get in heaven. I ain't got to like you and your ways. Y'all come on here. I ain't got to like how you've been treating one another. We don't like that. We don't like that. But when you can get it right with one another, God takes glory in that. When we can say, let me put, it, get, put my, side, my, my issues aside. Let us talk and let's talk through those issues. Let us get them right and then we can heal and then we can move on. But the moment we think we are exempt and the preacher's talking to everybody else but me, we got a problem. So therefore, there is, it, there is no, it is finished. It's a comma. It should be, it is finished, period. But it's a comma. Because you won't get it right. You're supposed to be moving ahead, but how can you move ahead and not deal with the things 
Now, don't look back with attraction, but uh, with with your your affection set on things of the past. But you do have to correct things that you have in your power to correct. So don't think you can come through here and we going we gonna praise God. Let me, you know, I don't know why people used to do it. I mentioned this Wednesday night. I mentioned it again today. Why people think they can just grab somebody, shout with them, and think that that solves everything? We're just enemies shouting. Y'all ain't going to help me. Well, later for the sleeping with your enemies, you're shouting with your enemy. You're worshiping with your enemy. Why is your brother in Christ your enemy in the first place when they shouldn't even be? That's your brother and your sister. That's your brother and your sister. I'm going to say it again. That's your brother and your sister. We should get together and put aside. Put your gift at the altar. Leave your gift at the altar. In other words, submit your gift so you can get you right. So when you pick the gift back up, it can be received. But the reason many of us can't receive gifts is because you didn't lay your gift at the altar and get it right with who you need to get it right with. Well, you know, the Lord forgave me in private. That's fine, but you have some more responsibility with your forgiveness. If you did it publicly, you ought to apologize publicly. If you did it at the church, you ought to apologize to the church. If you did it in private, you need to apologize in private. That don't mean if you did it in private, you need to go and, 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 and testify to the whole world what you did in private. You could wind up injuring and destroying people's faith. Therefore, we are also, since we are surrounded by so great crowd of witnesses, let us, aren't you glad it said let us? Yo, 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 yo. Yee, that makes me happy. It said let us, which means it's not just me preaching to you. It means me as well. It just doesn't mean me as just me. It means you. It means all of us together. Let us lay aside every sin, every weight. Every weight is not a sin, but every sin is a weight. All right. All right. Lay aside every weight and sin that easily so besets or ensnarrows us. Therefore, that means when I submit myself to the process, I allow God to speak to my heart and I allow uh, him to change my heart and I commit to the process. Many of us don't see it is finished because we haven't committed to the process. But when we commit to the process, and we'll see progress. The reason a lot of us haven't seen progress is because we haven't been through the process. Soon as somebody tells you what you've been doing and address you and confronts you, your defense is up. But what about saying, you know what, let me think about that. I might have been wrong. You know, I, I might not agree with you right now, but let me think about it. You know, please forgive me if I offended you and go on. Um, there are some of us uh, that know uh, that, that, that God bless you. You're guilty. Uh, uh, you, you, you have to deal with what you are uh, been facing. If you keep ignoring that, if you keep ignoring that, soon it will become, you know, we keep sweeping things under the rug. We sooner or later going to start tripping over stuff. Tripping over stuff that God has already dealt with. But because we won't deal with ourselves, we think it's all about everybody else. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. You can have a seat. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, so, therefore, you, you have to deal with your inner self and stop casting blame on everybody else. And if you have that and you address that, now it's up to you and the Lord to say, oh, I'm going to get this right. Mm -hmm. And if you offended someone, and you, 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 you know it's not right. This is only Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm just sharing with you Bible that you haven't heard in a while perhaps. And, 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 and I, so every now and then these messages come to confront us before we take a meal. Because I don't 
don't want to go take communion irreverently. I don't want to take it as if I have arrived. If anything, taking the Lord's table, serving the Lord's table, should humble us to say, Lord, wherever I've been, wherever my mind has been, prepare my heart. Uh, and, and, you know, Pastor, you know, sometimes you give us a call to let, remind us that there is communion. And you say, prepare yourself. You know why? Because some of us live unprepared. Prayerfully, what it will do is sooner or later, you'll come to the place. It's not necessarily so you can dress in the same colors. It's to make sure that we're conscious oh, that, that we're right with God. And that if we're not right, that we'll get it right. Because none of us are perfect. And if you live a life that you're perfect and nothing ever bothers you and you, you got it all going on, ah, I'm praying for you. Because sooner or later, you're going to find out it's not what you think it is. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We have to confront the inevitable, the unavoidable. A lot of times we ignore it and pray non-confrontational folk that are passive aggressive will pray that it will go away go lord let me just close my eyes a little tighter maybe when i open my eyes it won't be there have y'all ever been there and you just be like lord just please just, you know i really don't want to confront it but lord just and deal with it i know i ain't got only a few of y'all in here that's gonna tell the truth hallelujah he just like lord just, oh lord please am i seeing what i think i'm seeing lord please Lord Jesus, oh God, Lord, I, I, what I pray now is upon leadership is that there's another level of fortitude that will hit this house. That will start to confront those things that's weighing on me. Confront those things that we're attempting to avoid. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray by now we're doing this something right.